When it comes to seismic design, there are certain design features that can put a building at serious risk. In this video, we'll go over the four major configuration issues. So there are four major configuration issues in building design that can put the structure at risk during any seismic activity. The first one is known as soft stories. This occurs when the ground level story of a building is less stiff than the stories above it. The cumulative loads of the building are greatest at the base of the building. So the discontinuity and stiffness or strength creates an issue at the ground level. The stress of the loads will concentrate at that point where the ground story and the second story meet, making any drift or distortion occur right there, which then leads to collapse. There are three major types of soft story situations. The first is the flexible first floor. This often occurs when the first floor ceiling height is way taller than the ceiling height of the stories above it. Think of a big commercial office building or hotel lobby. The ceiling heights are usually taller and more grand, right? Well, unless that's carefully accounted for with additional structure, it can create a soft story. The second type of soft story is the indirect load path. This occurs when vertical framing elements from upper floors stop short at the second floor rather than continuing down through the ground floor and into the foundation. The discontinuous load path creates a huge concentration of pressure on the few structural elements on the ground floor. The last type of soft story is known as the heavy superstructure. This is created by an open first floor with few supporting walls or columns supporting a heavy structure above it. A famous example of a soft story gone wrong is the Northridge Meadow apartment complex in LA. It had an open ground floor used for car parking. This created a soft story, and during a 1994 earthquake, it resulted in complete collapse of the structure. The best solution to soft stories is to avoid any structural discontinuities that will create indirect load paths and add additional bracing or columns to open and taller first stories. The second major issue is known as discontinuous shear walls. This refers back to the indirect load path that we just discussed. The purpose of a shear wall is to collect diaphragm loads at each floor and bring them directly down to the foundation of the structure. If a building is made with shear walls that end at the second story without continuing down to the foundation, it can result in serious overstressing and lead to collapse. A great example of this was Olive View Hospital in San Fernando, California. It was constructed with discontinuous shear walls and suffered major destruction in a 1971 earthquake. The only real solution to this issue is to just avoid discontinuous shear walls altogether. If they are being used in the design of a building, they should be used properly. The third issue is variations in perimeter, strength, and stiffness. A building's seismic behavior is strongly influenced by its perimeter design. If there is a variation, for example, a steel moment frame structure with one concrete stair core on one corner, it causes the center of mass and the center of resistance to misalign leading to torsion. This is also why we often see elevator and stair cores located at the center of a large building, so that the center of mass and the center of resistance are aligned. And the fourth issue is re-entrant corners. Here are some examples of re-entrant corners. The two main problems that they cause are torsion and differential motions between different wings of a building. So for example, in an L-shaped building, Wing one may move in this direction, while wing two will move in the other direction. Some solutions to the re-entrant corner issue include using splayed corners, adding stiff resistance elements to the corner, or actually separating the building into simpler shapes so that each entity can easily resist vertical and lateral forces on its own. So there you have it, four major configuration conditions in building design. You can find a cheat sheet on everything we covered in this video on our website. Just click the link in the description below.
And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss new videos. See you next time. If you want to see more ARE study help, practice questions, explanations, and tips for aspiring architects, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And check out our website, linked in the description below. You'll find full-length practice exams, our blog for aspiring architects, and our free ARE playbook.